Praise be to God. I'd like to greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust we are all happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. May the good Lord richly bless you all. Hallelujah. As uh, we are going to worship the Lord together, God bless you. Even those online, may the good Lord richly bless you. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Let us stand to our feet and then be singing for the Lord as we worship Him. Praise be to God. Hallelujah to 
saints good morning saints praise the lord how many are still happy to be here today how many are thanking god for the meals that we have been eating praise the lord praise the lord so today we know the de- the devil's coffin there's gonna be the final nails yesterday we all experienced how many were feeling pity for the devil yesterday yeah you can think that you know you could meet a brother sitting with his hand just saying hey what happened to the devil was not good he was taken by a storm so today as we are waiting for instructions as the year ends and the new year comes let's just commit everything to the hands of the lord everyone as we all pray gracious heavenly father We say gracious heavenly father because for sure you are gracious unto us. You have called us to this grand and noble meeting. Lord, the meeting that Esther had to fast to get into the the the, the kind of meeting like we are in today. She had to fast and wait and pray for her to come into the meeting with the king. She had to come into the battle strategies where she would conquer herself first so she could have preeminence when it came to the king. Lord, this is where you have also placed us this morning where we can partake of the hidden manna. We can partake of divine things. We can partake of spiritual things. We can partake of things that are eternal, things that are not a, having a beginning of days and ending of days. Oh God, over through the years, and in your Bible, we've seen time after time when the high priest would enter into the holy of holies, and your prophet told us that the high priest was the only one who had access to that hidden manna that manna which never rotted that manna which was staying in the place where Aaron's rod budded forth Lord that manna he, the, the high priest would enter therein and partake of that he would come and then give unto the people and we are here Lord Jesus Christ where over the years we've seen this happening time after time and it's quickening us to something immortal something that has got no beginning and ending of days it's quickening our mortal bodies to a place as the preacher said to a place where this world won't be able it it will have to release us it will it won't be able to get a hold of us it's causing us live above the reproach of the day causing us to be to, to be quickened away from the things that great great teachers great academics great scientists are still failing upon so we are grateful and as we come to now, today this morning we are grateful for the meetings that we have had starting with the youth meeting 
Oh, what a blessing it was. The service is preached unto us. What a wonderful rejuvenating experiences we had. The couples meeting yesterday were thoroughly grateful. We are forever grateful. Now as we come to this final service, Lord, we are thinking today as the world is going on in a frenzy, a marketing frenzy. People are doing many things in the name of Christmas. But here we are remembering he who was and is and is to come the same jehovah who is the jesus christ of the new testament who is the holy ghost in our time living in our beings thank you lord for granting us a privilege thank you for transforming our minds away from what the world thinks away from the cosmos into the things of god we pray that you may you, you may give us the divine attentiveness. You may take us, the listeners, and hide us behind the cross of Calvary. Oh Lord, let revelation. You say, your prophet said, when the bride begins to know who she really is, what she stands for, then mighty exploits will be done. That's what we want to do. We want to do the works of God. We want to live the life of God. We want to be the representatives of God. And in order to do that, you said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell will never prevail. It is that revelation we have come for this morning that we may hear the revelation of God. Hear that which you said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. We want to hear what the Spirit saith. We want to know you not in the flesh but in the Spirit. Then it will give us overcoming power for this coming year. We commit ourselves, the worship of the Lord may it be acceptable before your face commit the singing of the songs and all proceedings may you have your way with us in jesus christ's name we pray amen god bless you saints hallelujah are we still happy praise be to god so just to show that you're welcome, I just wanted to shake the person next to you by the hand and say, God bless you. You're welcome in the house of the Lord. Amen and amen. So everybody just feel welcome. We're going to worship the Lord together. Sing for him, clap hands for him, and dance for him. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Can you, um, I want sweet by and by. I think it could be key F. In the sweet by and by, oh, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet, oh, in the sweet by and by, Lord.
on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious, the melodious songs of the blessed, and our spirits shall soar. Oh no, the sun for the blessing.
So you may take your seats. We'll ask uh, the deacons to collect the tithe and offering. And may the good Lord richly, richly bless you. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Bye. 
Sister Tebajo, Sister Levo, and then Sister Musekwa, and Sister Mashamba. Uh, the last one will be Michael and Hadassah. Praise be to God. Let's try G. <coughs> As they come, Sister Funi. We say Amen, Amen, Amen. Oh, we say Amen. Jesus 
The enemy comes like the blast. I know you'll raise the standard. I know you'll lift me up. You lift me up. Yes, Lord. You surely lift me up. You lift me up. Yes, Lord. You surely lift me up. That I think that I'm unworthy It seems so hard to pray Cause of the pressure of the day It's then I think of Jonah In the belly of the face Getting down to pray You lift him up Yes Lord You surely lift him up At the belly of the face you lift him up, yes, Lord. You surely lift him up. And there are things that I'm unworthy. It seems so hard to pray because of the pressure of the day. Is then I think of Jonah in the belly of the face, getting down to pray. You lift him up, yes, Lord. You surely lift him up at the belly of the faith. You lift him up, yes, Lord. You surely lift him up at the belly of the shadow of the For the things that we go through So whether I run the mountain No, you Lord, I'm in the valley That's one thing we must do We'll keep His way We will keep His way There's nothing without a purpose And always has a reason We go through life So when they run the mountain Know oh, you, Lord, I'm in the belly That's one thing we must do We keep this way We keep this way
will keep his faith. We will keep his faith. When you walk with God, you walk at you walk at When you walk with God, you gotta walk at you gotta walk at When you walk with your friend, you're right
God bless you. Today we're going to sing the song, He Knows My Name. one more time blessed be the name of the Lord glory to Jesus amen and amen we'll be calling our elder brother Nechunda to come forward and just give us an announcement songs. Amen. Amen. Like our pastor has announced that we'll have a play during the course of the conference. 
conference uh, at this time is uh, that time of the play and how many are ready to listen to the play of our junior Sunday school and we are so grateful to our beloved pastor we have engineered this play Amen Amen we know we are moving with the series of the book of Nehemiah. And what we, the teachings that we receive, we want to see them cultivated even in our children. Cultivated in our families. And even in our youth. So today we will just have a junior Sunday school displaying their understanding of the book of Nehemiah. Amen. Amen. If we don't take time to read the word, we will be shocked to find out that our children are ahead of us. If you have not been reading the book of Nehemiah, you will be shocked to see the junior Sunday school far ahead of you. Amen. Amen. So we must uh, live according according to the word that is being preached, the, res the re revelation that we receive, we must pray it. We must live according to it and testify about it. Amen. Amen. Because we can't receive, you know, certain teachings and live lives that are different from that teaching. So we believe that the word must influence our lives. It must be displayed in every aspect of our lives. Amen. Amen. So this is the time of the play. And how many are under anticipation? Amen. Amen. As we give a hand of praise as they are coming. Amen. Let's just have a song as we give them time to prepare. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, Let's try it. little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, let it shine, let it shine This little light I'm gonna let it shine Oh, this little light I'm gonna let it shine Oh, this little light of mine I'm gonna let it Shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, this little, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light. Shine, let it shine. Oh, this little light, I'm gonna let it shine. This little 
Brothers and sisters, today we are going to see a play about Nehemiah, a man who was concerned about the welfare of his land. My brother, Nehemiah, what can you tell me about the Jews who escaped captivity in Babylon and how are things going in Jerusalem? The captives who have escaped and came back are having all different kinds of troubles and the walls of Jerusalem have been broken down and the gates have been burned with fire. After Nehemiah heard what happened in Jerusalem, he prayed and fasted for days and said, O oh Lord my God, I am your servant, so please have mercy on me. I and my family and the rest of your people have disobeyed you in the, in the teachings of Moses. Please answer my prayer, for I was the king's cupbearer. After praying, Nehemiah then went to the king and asked permission to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. What's wrong, 
What's wrong, Nehemiah? Why are you looking? Why are you looking so sad? Why shouldn't I be sad? When my city lies in ruins, the walls have been broken down and the gates have been burnt with fire. May I please have your permission to go and rebuild the wall of Jerusalem? I give you my blessings. God touched the king's heart and gave Nehemiah his blessings. He also sent soldiers and all that he needed. Nehemiah started gathering the people to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and said unto them, God has let me return, the same he has let your tribes return. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Yay! When Sambalat, Tobiah, and the Ammonites heard this, they were grieved exceedingly. And this is what they said. Governor Sambalat. Yes, Jamie. Ne Nehemiah is gathering the people to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. I know. He even sent me this passage. He sent me this letter saying, sending him a passage. He even said we should give him the timber of this crazy idea. If he succeeds, we'll lose control over the city. Nehemiah, what are you doing? Are you playing us the king? No, but God will prosper us. But you, you, and you will have no claim, right, or memorial in Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> that was <boy is> crazy. <laughs> then they laughed and said to themselves, I promise you, Tobiah, Nehemiah, I mentioned that Nehemiah will never complete this task. For sure he won't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid of your enemies, for the Lord will fight our battles for us. And Nehemiah gathered the people and they started to build. Pass the bricks over to the back over there. When Sanballat Tobiah and Geshen heard that they started to build the walls, they became very angry and came with his people and said, Nehemiah. Nehemiah, what do you know about rebuilding a city? Look at these walls. Not even a fox can go on top of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hear us, O God, for we are being mocked. Nehemiah, you are a fool. You will never complete this war. <laughs> <laughs> and the people worked together and started building together, holding a weapon in each hand. Everyone worked Everyone had a sword girded up by his side, and the one with the trumpet by the side of Nehemiah. And 
it came to pass when they just finished to build the walls of Jerusalem, and it was bruised only to set the gates and the doors. When Tobiah and Sanballat and Jeshem requested Nehemiah to meet in some villages, but God, but Nehemiah refused to leave God's work, and then Sanballat sent a servant with a letter, and it said. Nehemiah, I have an urgent message from St. Ballot. A rumor is going around the nations that we are planning to rebuild the world and planning to rebel because I want to be their king. It says here that when the Persian king hears this, he will want my head. This is so bad. Maybe we can defend ourselves with our own soldiers. Mm. And they came and my mother did it to us. When they killed Amaya, what did they do to us? No, none of this is true. The king gave me his blessing. What is Ambalat is telling the truth? What's then? Our enemies are trying to frighten us and keep us from doing our work. But I ask God to give me strength. Shamaya, deliver our response to Sanbalat. The work continues. When Sambalat heard that the Jews were not discouraged to build the wall of Jerusalem, he was angry and said, ah! The gold is man! We should have first killed him when, we, when he first came to us. But it's not too late. You! You! Nehemiah, I trust you. Almost like a brother. So I've seen this task, and you will be a very rich man. (laughs) 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 Tobiah and Sanballat paid money to Shemaiah to make Nehemiah afraid and sin in order to have a matter against him, to reproach him. Then Shemaiah called Nehemiah to his house. Come in. Shemaiah, why did you call me? What's the matter? We must leave this place right now. But why? Your enemies are planning to kill you tonight. We must go to the holy place and lock all the doors. Why would a man like me have to run and hide in the temple to save my life? No, I won't go. You must go. God sent me here to save you. No, I don't think God had anything to do with this. Tobiah and Sanballat have paid you to trick me into doing something wrong because you wanted to ruin my good name. I don't know what you're talking about. Remember, oh my God, all the evil things Sanballat and Tobiah have done. And remember Nodiah the prophet and all the prophets like her who tried to intimidate me. You're making a mistake. No, you made the mistake. And God will not forget this. <laughs> Before the walls were built, people were taken captive to Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar. Now that the walls have been rebuilt, it is time to call the people back. Nehemiah found the records of the people who first returned, and this is what he said.
the children of Ailan, the children of Asgar, the people of Adam, the descendants of Harib, the descendants of Asaph, the temple musicians, the potters, Atter, Telman, the children of Seir, the children of Shalmai, the children of Uzzah, the children of Solomon's servants, Sotai, Perida, Sopharet. Now that all the tribes have returned, let us recommit ourselves to God. Ezra, will you read the law that Moses gave to us? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. This is the law of Moses. Please read for us. Exodus 19 to 21. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of the bond. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any given image or any likeness of any thing that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for the for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the inheritance of the fathers upon the children and the third and fourth generation of the that hate me, and shew mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, thy God, in vain, for the Lord will not hold him. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guilt that taketh his name in vain. Go, eat this, eat the fat and drink the sweet. For and share with those who have nothing prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Destroy this temple, Jesus said, and I will rebuild it in three days. He was showing that none is greater than him when it comes to constructing his hands of laid the very foundation the same hand will place the capstone stone after stone after stone after stone Stand up. 
again Stone after stone after stone after stone Brick upon brick upon brick upon brick Revelation after revelation This house will stand again
Hallelujah. How many were blessed? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Nehemiah, God come forth. Hallelujah. Let's just say in Dinetari Rohama, Upenyuangu. Hallelujah. I've got God the Comforter. F. Dinetariro Hama. Sina 
feel me Be it unto us according to your word, Lord. I welcome everyone in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord. Such a wonderful atmosphere. We appreciate the Lord so much. God bless you, invisible audience. Happy to have you in service. I've got uh, some thanksgivings. Uh, Brother Takuzo is saying, Shalom, beloved personal saints. <clears throat> I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Lord for 
safe passage to and from Zimbabwe. Bless be the name of the Lord. And then Brother Ezra is saying, Shalom, beloved person and saints. I really want to thank God for healing my mother. Amen. Amen. She was miraculously healed yesterday. I really feel encouraged. And I want to appreciate you for your prayers. God bless you richly, Brother Ezra. Amen. Is you give a hand of praise for that? Shalom, beloved pastor and saints. This one, Brother Sitley. I would like to thank God and appreciate you for your prayers. The pain has ceased uh, after the blood and some whitish things came out during the night. I'm now feeling better. God bless you. Father Sisley. Amen. Amen. He's a God that heareth and answereth prayers. Amen. These were requests given yesterday. And the Lord is already delivered. And we want to thank Him. If you have a request, as we bow our heads, you can take courage from these testimonies to know that he is a God that heareth and answereth prayer. Praise be to God. Whatever your condition could be, sickness, confusion, you need the Holy Ghost, whatever it is, believe he's right here to meet us upon our point of needs. If we can believe. Father in heaven, he who was, who is and who is to come, the author of life, the author and finisher of our faith, you the giver of every good and perfect gift, we come in adoration and appreciation, grateful for this finished work that we always withdraw from, a people that are not worthy, a people that are deserving of all punishment. But through your amazing grace, through your blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel, you've given us a new and a living way. A passage that translated us into the kingdom of your dear son, that we can stand as heirs, blessed partakers of divine nature. We come and salute you for all this. You're not just a God of history or a God far away. We are witnessing you in our midst, even in these testimonies that are being given. We are witnessing you in our lives, even as you are answering our prayers. And we want you to know that we are grateful and we don't take it lightly, neither do we take it for granted. I pray this blessed end time afternoon lifting your name high above every other name together with your children thanking you for brother Ezra's mother thanking you for brother Sisley's healing thanking you for giving brother Taku a safe passage and many other thanksgiving that are upon the hearts of your children but they didn't get a chance to bring them up here all of them we say thank you even, Lord, as we are coming to the setting of 2023 and the rising of 24, it's always a special period for us. We are always assured for unspeakable blessings, true leadership, direction. And, Father, all these years we can testify it has not been men that has been guiding us. 
but your great pillar of fire, the great cloud of glory. Step by step, we are walking into something that we are beholding. And Father, it gives us courage. Courage, O oh God, to hold on, to soldier on. Oh, because you are with us, you are in us, and we know it's unto the end of the world. As we stand, even this moment in time, we are very conscious of our atmosphere. We are conscious of our season. We are conscious of what you want done with this word. We are also conscious of the imminence of the hour. How it's later than the world thinks. And how at any time, in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, the rapture can go. We are here, Lord Jesus Christ, under such an influence as we cast down every reasonings and imaginations that exalted themselves above the word of God. We put focus upon your divine oracles, the revealed word even in this time. Look at how you began with us with a beautiful youth conference, having multiple preachers talk to our youth. It was an honor, Lord, just to see your servants coming from different angles, bringing divine instructions to these little ones. May your name be glorified. We thank you for the mishawaka we had even in the evening. How also different preachers came with different revelations. Their reflection about this word, about this ministry, the message of the hour, and how it was of encouragement to us. We thank you for bringing your servant, our brother, all the way from Australia just to come and kick demons out of our camp father we were blessed even lord how he preached on saturday morning and evening father we appreciate the anointing and atmosphere that came down and the deliverance you gave to your children we also thank you father not only for that but the service he preached yesterday morning it was a blessing as you were taking us fed the lord to show us how we need to defend our faith in this end time. And it's giving us courage to know. Now is the youth are coming in, Lord, showing us this book of Nehemiah in such clarity, with such precision, with such eloquence. Father, we thank you that it's one language that is being spoken. The spirit and the bride say come. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the couples meeting. What will we do without these meetings, Lord? How insightful, how you reveal yourself, how you open, dear God, things that we cannot read from any place, but things that your spirit can only offer fresh. And we are witnesses, oh God, that you moved amongst us yesterday night, that we even left here today. Though tired, but we know we benefited much. And we are grateful, Lord, for all the questions that we asked and all the answers that were given and all the lives that were transformed. And now we are here for the last service. We thank you again for this wonderful Sunday school team, the teachers that are teaching these kids, encouraging them in this path. Bless them, I pray. We know it's not an easy task. It takes commitment. It takes prayer. It takes patience just to assist them to come to this state. And we appreciate, Lord, how they could just grasp this revelation in a short space period of time and bring it to us with this clarity. I'm standing before your children now. You opened this year for us with the contest. You took us, showing us how Demas left Paul. You drove us into success in the West. Look on this while I go West. Via apocalypse, so many things we saw throughout the year. Yourself revealing yourself in another fashion taking us upon the mountain top, the seventh peak, 
to see a new world, a new land under the third pool ministry, giving us the king's word that fits right in our hands. We thank you. And now we are here at the harvest time, at the setting of the year to reflect. Not only to reflect, Lord, but to get further instructions that we can step in the coming year with vision and focus. And I pray that you take me and hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Remove every humanistic element. I take your word very seriously. I take your people very seriously. And I know they are not here to hear cunningly devised fables, but the true living word of God. And for your holy name's sake, for the faith that is in the hearts of your children, I pray that you close my lips to everything that is not of thee. Only open them to that which is of edification. The subject I'm carrying is not easy, but I believe you are here to give me unction. I believe you are here to make it clear to your children that they may see it, O oh God, the way you have them to see it. Without you, Lord, it will be nothing, but with you it will be something. It may not be for long, but let it leave a mark. A mark in the lives of your children. I thank you. I love you. We love you. We surrender our all into your hands. We thank you for the love that's been shown throughout the conference. People waking up early, cooking for us. People sacrificing their time, their money, just to make ends meet. It's never easy to arrange a conference. But there are those that carry the burden. And we thank you for those who are behind the scenes who are carrying the Lord, you bless them and strengthen them. Even now as the word shall come, give them strength to be attentive. Even those that may not be here in the tabernacle, may they get something of value. Let the devil not rob them because they were serving your people. They were making life easy for your people. Cover them by your blood. I thank you this moment in time as I surrender and dedicate everything into your hands. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody say amen. So give a hand of praise. Praise be to God. May we temporarily take our seats. God bless you, friends. How many are happy to be back? I'm very happy to be back. The joy I have takes away my tire. Because it's always good. No, yesterday we felt like, thank you, it, it could have been the last service, you know. After the couple's meeting. How many enjoyed the couple's meeting? I believe it was so wonderful that we could not leave this place. How many enjoyed the youth meeting? I think it was also very wonderful. We heard from multiple preachers. How many enjoyed Misha Waka? We thank God for that as well. And I mean, appreciate our precious brother Crispin. We certainly appreciate you, beloved, for your labors of love. I want to take this time also to welcome. Uh, to welcome, to welcome. Um, We've got Pastor Matava with us. God bless you, Pastor. I'm going to ask him to stand and wave. We, we all know him, but that we can give him a warm welcome. Maybe you can just wave. Praise the Lord. We also have brother Netavani and the family. Uh, they are our people. Eh? I'm, I'm going to ask them to just wave also. Praise the Lord. We certainly appreciate you. 
Actually, you would be surprised if you don't come one of the days. <laughs> so we are very happy to always have you in such times as this. And uh, we also have brother and sister Munyama. I will ask them to stand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some you know him as Brother Daniel. Eh? Yeah, Brother Daniel, we come a long way. And we're happy to have him. Having gained weight. Uh, we appreciate Sister Munyama as well. Uh, this visit was long overdue. Eh? But finally they made it. So we thank God for all that. And then to Jay, I welcome everybody else. God bless you. Feel welcomed. So today, by God's grace, this is the final day, our conference. And um, I'm going to request a song to be sung. I think we can even call it the song of the year. Not to say we don't have songs that were written this year. Many songs were written. But this one I think it will be relevant. And then um, not only that. Um, I'm requesting you politely to make sure that no one sleeps by your side. If the person next to you sleep, you are also going to sleep. Because sleep is contagious. So you'll be doing yourself a favor. Now there are people that did not sleep cooking for us. We appreciate all that. But I've prayed for you that God will give you supernatural strength. Because what I'll preach, I don't want you to miss it for any reason. Because this is the last sermon for the year during the conference. And I believe it will be instructive and directing and establishing. So I think the theme of the year, apart from Lord open this year, it's apocalypse. Apocalypse is the revelation of God that automatically exposes the devil and positions the bride. So this is a song that was written here and I think it will reflect on the year and what we shall have. Praise be to God. So I'm going to ask them to just sing this song for us. Apocalypse. And then let's not just listen to it as a special song. Be attentive to what is spoken there and reflect on it as well. Praise the Lord. So, we're going to have apocalypse. You can come up. It's okay. You can come up. It's fine. Praise the Lord. So, this song, the way it was written, is unique. Uh, it was Brother Gift and uh, Sister Kawarendwe. They were in the process of writing a song and they had a certain tune that they wanted to use. So when I listened to that tune, I condemned the song. And I said, we, we don't need it like that. And then I gave them a task and I referred them to my wife as well say if you want a better tune let, let's try with her as well and then of course I could see the burden that they have they were pregnant and travailing to deliver something 
Because they were inspired by the season. So this is something that any musician can get. And you must know that my doors are opened. That we can travel together. So then we looked at it. And we traveled together. And then we produced this song, Apocalypse. So it's, it's a combination of the burden that they had and the understanding of the season that we are in. Of course, even if I contribute to the song, you don't put my name there. You simply say it was written by brother Gift and sister Kawarenwe. And that's the same with everybody that writes a song. You can come, it's your burden. I can say one or two, three words. But it's your song. It was your burden. Before that burden, I could not come to you. Because Brother Motlana wants to explain every verse to say, this one was the pastor, this one was me, and this one was that. But the bottom line is, is the one that starts with the burden. And that's the important thing. And every musician must be inspired. And when you have that burden, there are many people that can support you to deliver it. So they're going to sing this song. And then they will project the lyrics for us. Maybe that can be easy for us to bring them down before they sing them. And, and then we understand. Apocalypse. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The song says, The devil doesn't like it. When you stand in position, you try to ensnare you entangled you in the traps of Babylon. But we thank God for his word. And we are grateful for apocalypse. Revealing God, exposing the devil, placing the bride. We are going home some sweet day. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, we'll be taken away. We're going home where there'll be no more sorrow, no more temptation. We'll leave this flesh called Babylon. We'll leave this space called time. If you feel worn out, tired, at the verge of giving up. Just look back and see. Just see how far you've come. You are not where you want to be. But you are not where you used to be. The grace that brought you this far will carry you through. The revelation of God, our hidden manna, from my race, I now see grace. Thy maker is thine husband. Truly, a book in symbols. Look on this while I go west. He cried, Jacob, if I love, new name, true name, same name. Seal not the sayings of this book. The older shall save the younger. Fear not preaching. We are going home. Praise be to God. So we just want to be part of it as it is going through by God's grace. If you can just project them, would really, really appreciate it. Are you winning?
the revelation of God. Awa hiren mana, from my race I now see grace. Thy maker is thine husband.
I'm going to invite your attention to the book of Nehemiah chapter 2 and then we're going to read from verse um, 9 and to 11 and then maybe before we even start with that part just put your finger there Let's start with um, chapter 13. We'll read verse 1 to 3. But put your finger on chapter 2. On that day, they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people. And therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. Ngaduba ilo vachivarera vatu bukuya mushe vawana umwari wafi usungu vana mu amuni na muaba ani ajena kachivizo chamzimu because because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Balaam against them that he should curse them. How bid our God turn the curse into a blessing? Gauri, abangu tanga neza wa isirere ngavu shwa na gamadi wavi ava chora biliamu uri ava ava turere kombo ava yehova we ashandu kisa samba lava patshezo. Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. Ariba chipa wono yomulayo. So first is the reading of the law. And then the people acted upon what they read and heard. There was a separation from the mixed multitude. Because now at this junction, there was a lot of infiltration that had taken place. And now the Ammonite and the Moabites, you can trace them from Lot, once with Abraham. And is separated because of the, gli- the the shining city of Sodom. How it was shining. How many remember that? And we traced Lot. And we saw that the spirit that was upon him was the spirit that was upon Demas. Because Demas did not go to the beer holes. When the Bible says Demas forsook me, Paul speaking, the prophet says Demas did not go into the world. But Demas went to a gospel of prosperity. He was still a believer. But he went back to the first and second pool of Paul. And it's the same thing we saw in the ministry of William Branham. We spoke about Demas Shakarian. We spoke about De- and Baxter, we, we, we spoke about N. Baxter. Uh, how many remember that? And we showed you how the same spirit is translated even under the bride ministry. That there is a departure from the progression of revelation as given by Malachi 4. There is a spot that William Branham left us. It is upon the seventh peak where we have a gleam of the other land. He didn't leave us on the first pool or the second pool, but the third pool and upon the seventh peak we have a view from the other side and we can behold what is about to come to pass. Praise be to God. Are we together? So 
now that lot. Are you with me? Now I'm trying to show you San Balat. Oh, okay. Have I read that already? Not yet. <laughs> I'm trying to show you the Ammonites and the Moabites. That's where Tobias and Sanballat came from. Are you seeing these guys? Now, on, on Nehemiah chapter 2, let, let's read verse 9 to 11. Do, don't forget 13. These tribes are never supposed to come into the congregation. And that's the tribes that these men are coming from. Then I came to the governors behind the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. When San Balad the Horonite and Tobiah the servant of the Ammonite heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. <laughs> Autonomy 23, 23, the Bible says, An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Because they met you not with bread and water in the way when ye came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Bilpo, Petho of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Murandundi Gauri, Ziliwa, Nitivai Gibita, Bonizima, Bonizima, Ziliwa, Namadi, Bambotora, Biriamu, Murawa Eboro, Wapetoro. That's why Nehemiah said you have no part to build with us. Why? Because he knew what was written in the law. There was a history. You know, there are some people that walk. And they walk like they are walking ordinarily. But they are scriptural. <laughs> They've got a great deal of divine backup that is scriptural. They may speak a word to you as ordinary. But that word carries a lot of weight in the hands and eyes of God. And this is how Nehemiah was. Now for today, I'm going to preach on Sanballat and Tobiah. Sanballat and Tobiah. And for a subheading, the blushing bride and the tracing of pedigree. The blushing bride and the tracing of pedigree. Now, this is quite unusual for the end of the conference. But I will quote what Brother Matava said. He said, We are not sure whether we are landing or we are going to fuel in the air. I'm sure you know rockets, they fuel in the air. Meaning, there are times where you are not going to land. And I think it's such a time as that. Because there will be an overlap. As we move from 23 to 24, there is an overlap. Now, this is not an easy subject to speak on. My slide number two. I'm the one saying this, but also William Branham is saying the same. This is not an easy subject to speak on. The prophet says, in a blushing prophet, this is not an easy subject to speak on. 
I could think of many things that were easier to speak on. But brother, if somebody don't stand out in this sinful, adulterous day that we live in, and call the colors, what is going to happen? Somebody has got to speak the thing. Somebody has got to place it before the people. Perhaps Ezra didn't want to do it. But it was in his heart. Allow me to say this. The name Ezra means a helper. And we are Ezra as the bride of Christ, as the wife of Christ. We are the helper of the Lord Jesus. But now the prophet is saying perhaps the bride, perhaps Ezra didn't want to do it. There are many people that are not prepared to speak on subjects that are not easy. But one thing for sure, if you are the bride, the prophet says it must be in your heart. You may not be prepared to speak about it, but it has to be there in your heart. That strange call, the feeling of that strange call, the burden of the hour is a writer. It has to be right in your heart. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now there is a prayer that Jesus prayed at the end of his ministry. And I also believe it was not an easy subject or an easy prayer. And I think that's where we are standing. There is William Branham. There is Ezra. There is Nehemiah. And here we stand. Now hear how Jesus prayed. In John 17. At the end of his ministry. We are in the end time. Ezra and Nehemiah. Are the last prophets in the end time. Of the Old Testament. Testament. After them, we saw the Messiah. I have manifested thy name unto men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now, they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Are you relating to this? Are you relating to this? For I have given them unto, I have given unto them the words which thou hast gavest me. And they have received them and have known surely that I come out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me. Gauri mafungo ewa mpandi one enda wafa wone watanganeza vadivanga ngo zwa uri ndo dhani chiva iwe wotenda zwa uri ndi iwe wontumao. Now listen to this transition. Are you relating to this? Now I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Amen. Now, do you understand this language? When I say this is not an easy subject to speak on, it was the same with Jesus. Imagine coming praying, even people hearing you, that I pray for them, and I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Allow me to take off my jacket. 
Now you will agree with me. The reason why it was difficult for Ezra. It is because. He was called for such a task. As you shall see when we go forward. That the burden that Ezra had. It was limited to a certain class of people. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, the condition of the hour. Slide number four. We saw Daniel. We saw Ezra. And we saw Nehemiah. Now, Daniel was the preparation for an exodus. In the 68th year, he read from the book of Jeremiah. And he knew the hour that he was living in. That it was time to leave Babylon. But Ezra, in that hour, he carried the moral decay of the land at heart. And Nehemiah was focused on the fortification of the bride. So the condition of the hour is we are on a journey. The exodus is at hand. Truth has got to be known. The rapture is at hand. Is a writer. So we are in the preparation of an exodus. Number two, there is moral decay in that hour of an exodus. And why is there a moral decay? Because the bride is not fortified. So these three men are showing us the condition of the hour that we are living in. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So allow me now to move into my subject in a way that you understand. I'm going to define starting from my subheading. When we say the blushing bride and the tracing of pedigree it is all pointing at St. Balat and Tobias. Maybe let's just start with the, the top part. Slide 7 and 8. Slide we will define what the word Sanballat or the name Sanballat mean. Before we come to that part. Now, Sanballat is a bramble bush. A bramble bush. And it means enemy in secret. I preached on noiseless creepers with a hidden agenda to conquer, extinguish, and subdue. Is that right? Noiseless creepers. Now, now Sanballat is an enemy in secret. It's like Judas Iscariot. He was an enemy, but in secret. That's why he used a kiss to betray. I once preached about the three kisses. I showed you the kiss of apostasy. Which was Opa kissing Ruth goodbye. Uh, Opa kissing Naomi goodbye. And we saw the kiss of Absalom. Is a writer. It was rebellion. And we saw the kiss of Judas. It was a kiss of betrayal. Because this betrayal. Because this man was an enemy in secret. This is very dangerous. Now, let's define Tobiah. Tobiah, it means the Lord is good. I thought you were going to say, hmm. Or else you are sleeping, eh? Tobiah means the Lord is good. 
Meaning this man, he makes you feel comfortable. His name is a Christian name. His name sounds good. That my name is the Lord is good. My name is brother, the Lord is good. Say, really, that's your name? Say, brother, I can trust you. Your name is the Lord is good. That's why these two, I put them together. San Balat and Tobiah. It shows the secrecy of the enemy. One is saying the Lord is good. And the other one is there to smite. Take you down. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And because of these two men. That's why we are saying the blushing bride. Now the blushing bride. I'm speaking dispensations. The prophet preached a blushing prophet. That's a one man's ministry. Is a right. But we are no longer under the one man's ministry. All that was in William Branham has been poured into the bride. So it's no longer William Branham blushing. But it's the bride. The final voice to this final age. Which is the voice of many waters. That's where we are standing. It's the blushing bride. And when we say and the tracing of pedigree. Let's start with the word blush. And then we come to the tracing of pedigree. I'm still defining. The word blush according to Webster it means to redden the cheeks or face. To redden your cheeks become red. To redden the cheeks or face. To be suddenly suffused with red color in the cheeks of face. From a sense of guilt. Shame. Confusion. Modest. Or surprise. Are you with me? No, no, it's like a white person or the people with light skin, they become red. No, 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 it's saying, but that redness is coming because of guilt or shame or confusion. Is a right? Of course, there's modesty, but we are not worried about shamefacedness here. Now, this is the shame and confusion that is caused by the moral decay. Are we together? So, that is what Ezra did in chapter 9. He blushed. And these are the shoes that the bride is supposed to be putting on as we speak. How many understand the word blush now? Praise be to God. Check the person next to you. Say, the devil or the Philistines are upon you. Samson, the Philistines are upon you. Praise be to God. So I, I had another person that visited and they were so surprised like, Pastor, I don't understand when you're, no, I was talking to them on the phone. It's like, Pastor, I don't get it. When you talk in church, you say, don't sleep. You mean people can sleep in that atmosphere? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, you know what, brother? I, I could not say much. He says, I, I can't believe that. I'll, I'll be on live, but watching, like, blessed be the name of the Lord. Do not be robbed. So that's blush. 
Now let's come to the word pedigree. Now pedigree, number one, it means a lineage or a line of ancestors from which a person or tribe descends. That's what you call genealogy. Is it right? And Webster gives an example. Alteration of surnames have obscured the truth of our pedigrees. To say people that change their surnames, they make us lose track of our genealogies. Is a writer? Now, when you talk about the Jews, the Jews preserved the pedigrees of their tribes and they guarded them with much caution. Somebody say amen. Now that's why William Branham as I'm going to show you something here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mentioned this in slide number 12 the cleanest bloodstream on earth. Just to show you how the Jews preserved their pedigrees. Brother Barnum said, now we find that Israel was not to mix marriage. Their marriage was to be among one another. Not no Israelite to even marry a Gentile but was to keep their blood stream clean. And even till this day, I believe the Jewish blood stream is the cleanest blood. The cleanest blood stream on the face of the earth today is the Jew. They are still looking for that Messiah. So as we speak right now, there is no race of people upon the planet that have preserved the purity of their bloodline than the Jews. That's why the word pedigree matters. Because these men were supposed to receive the Messiah. And the Messiah was supposed to come from a specific bloodline. So they could not meddle in mixed marriages or change of surnames. Why? Because it will compromise the authenticity of the Messiah. Because we know he must come from a pure line. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know the danger of mixing things. I can tell you in the animal kingdom. You can find a dog that looks like a certain breed. But if you study the DNA of that dog, you might not realize that the physical features Oh, you realize that the physical features are not in line with the DNA. Yes, they call it a German shepherd. They call it a boa bull. But the DNA is refusing. But the, the outlook looks like it. Now, you see how subtle it is. That's why the Jews could not make a mistake. Pedigree. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now let's go back to the subject. Sanbalat and Tobiah. Sanbalat and Tobiah. This is the Lord is good and a secret enemy. And in that hour, there is a bride that is blushing. And that bride is blushing for a specific people. The sins of a specific people. And how are they going about it? They are tracing the pedigree before they start to pray. Before they intercede. Before they incorporate. They must test the pedigree. Because 
Oh, there is an balat and topaya. The Lord is good. And yet there is a secret enemy. So there is need to filter. There is need to check the pedigree. Because the enemy is coming with the highest form of deception. And at the junction of 23 and 24, God is coming to brood upon the bride. I say the bride must be blushing, but you must be cautious. The prayer of Christ was specific. I pray for these ones, not those ones. Somebody say amen. Now you can't pray that prayer without tracing the pedigree. Jesus knew who was the serpent seed. And he knew who was not the serpent seed. That's why he said, Judas, your time is come. Go and do what you want to do. That's why he could pray that prayer. This is not an easy sermon to preach. Neither is it an easy time that we are living in. Neither is it a small burden to carry. Because this burden will bring a separation. Somebody say amen. After they read the law of Moses, there was a separation from mixed multitude. After we preach this, there will be a separation from mixed multitude. What an hour that we are living in. Glory be to God. Origin is important. Ezra chapter 2. I read from verse 59. Origin is important. Now when we say origin is important, you know, it's something that you take lightly. But it's something very spiritual. I'm sure if you're a girl and you want to be married, you tell your parents, I want to get married to a certain boy. The first question your parents ask you, where is he from? Before anything, I'm not talking about Laudesian parents that will say, what job does he have? And how much does he earn? A real parent will ask, where is he from? Even if you're a man, you want to bring a bride, your parents will ask you, where is she from? Because origin is important. Origin has an influence. We know we've got family spirits. We've got national spirits that influence the global village. If you see a person from a certain country, they behave in a certain way. A person from a certain family, they behave in a certain way. So there are spirits that are affecting families and nations. So if you tell the person is from that country, then your parents will start to think, if that person is from that country, could he be a good husband or a good wife because they are identifying the person from their point of origin and it's not a lie brother nations have spirits South Africa has its own spirits Zimbabwe has its own spirits Zambia has its own spirits America has its own spirits France has its own spirits Russia has its own spirits Australia has its own spirits every country it's a spirit. Origin is important. Somebody say amen. But we know how the devil has marauded the earth. To a point now that he has overwhelmed national spirits. Now we have what we call the Laodicean spirit. To a point that a prostitute 
suit in Nigeria. Used to dress like a Nigerian. A prostitute in India. Would only be recognized by Indians. Because there will be an Indian prostitute. But as we speak right now, the spirit of Laodicea has made a prostitute from Somalia to dress like a prostitute in South Africa. Because they're under one influencer. And it's a global influencer. It's a Laodicean influencer. And all through social media, it only takes one Beyonce to take all our billions young girls into wrong dressing. If she dresses in a certain way, you see that month. When Beyonce has a tour, you see all the girls in that month dressing in a certain color, dressing in a certain way, because it's no longer national spirit, it's a global spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we thank God that in the midst of that, when there's a global spirit, we also have received a kingdom that cannot be moved. And I make a disclaimer. You are not pastored by a Zimbabwean. You are not pastored by a man from another country that you know. Your brother is not a South African. Let me say something. We came from God. We go back from God. I'm not a Zimbabwean. Neither am I an African. I'm a son of God. And so are you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Young girl, when you want to be married, you don't marry a South African. Neither do you marry a Zimbabwean. You must marry a Christian. You marry a believer. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard. Now we are having an influence from another world. As they are having influence from another world, the lid of hell was opened. More than 200 million demons were set loose in Revelation 9. But that was not the end. A mighty angel, he came with an open book. And heaven was opened and watched the influence coming upon the members of the bride. Origin is important. We came from God. We go back to God. Now Ezra chapter 2 verse 59. The Bible says, and these were they which went up from Telmela, Telhasa, Cherub, Adan, and Imar. But they could not shoo their father's house and their seed, whether they were of Israel. Mm. Are you listening to these people? I'm sure you heard the names being called from each tribe, but they, they were acting. Yes. Now, first 60 says, the children of Delalia, the children of Tobiah, the children of Nekoda, 652. These ones, they could not show their father's house. They could not prove their pedigree. They just say we are Israelites. But when we are trying to trace who's your father and who's your father's father, do they can't go further. They couldn't prove their pedigree. But we thank God for Zerubbabel. We thank God for Joshua. They were not just saying, come here. Let's build together. They will look in your eyes. Tell us your pedigree. 
Glory be to God. Somebody say amen. There is a need for a check of pedigree. Oh, glory be to God. How many are here in this language? How many are here in this language? Oh, I love this Lord Jesus. Origin is important. Now, Tobiah and Sanbalata could not break up their origin. I said it's not an easy subject to preach. But you know, there are times where you look and you say, is this, is this person a Pentecostal? Or they're a message believer? Is this singing of message believers? Or it's of denominations? This dress code, is it for a message believer? Or it's for a denomination? This language, is it becoming of a believer? Or it's a language of an unbeliever? You, you can't trace the origin of the person. But is this person a real believer or they're not a believer? And we are at that junction, brother, where lines must be drawn. Because there's Tobiah and San Palata. Lines have to be drawn. The bride is blushing. The bride is tracing the pedigree. Blessed be the name of the Lord. With all due respect, this can only be done by the Spirit of God. That's why I say it's not an easy thing. When you hear Christ say you are of your father the devil, to a religious man, and he says the works of your father you do, that made Pharisees angry. That's why they crucified him. But they didn't realize. You know the serpent seed started with John. The one with the spirit and power of Elijah. He's the one who began with the serpent seed. When he said, you brood of vipers. That's not language, brother. It's not language. He's telling you that you are snakes. You are the serpent seed. You are, you are brood of vipers. You came from the serpent in Eden. That's why John was not popular. And Jesus came with the same doctrine. And he made it clear that you are not just a brood of vipers. You are of your father the devil. That the viper is Satan. So Jesus did not pray for the serpent seed. You know why? Because demons cannot repent. It's a waste of time. You are casting your bread upon the swine. Now, let me tell you, love is not emotional. And sympathy is not taking care of the weak and the sick. Sympathy is to do the will of God. There were many that were sick at Bethsaida. Jesus only healed one. Was he not having the power to heal all? Did he not care for the rest? The issue was sympathy was to do the will of God. The son can do nothing except what he sees the father do. And as the bride, we have come to that junction. This is not a relationship of flesh and blood. If you are in this church because of flesh and blood, you are in the wrong place. If you are in this place, outside revelation, you are in the wrong place because we are not called for flesh and blood agenda. Hallelujah. And I make it even clearer. You are not even here because of geographical location. If you are here because of geographical location, you are in the wrong place. Brother, this is the voice of God calling the elected of the hour. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This may not make sense now, but after the rapture goes, this voice will make sense. There is something that is taking place. And it's not a blood thing. It's 
not a geographical location thing. It's a divine thing. The pool of the hour. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now do you see the importance of origin? Move with me. You know, I want you to see the statute of these guys. They're very subtle. To a point that you may never trust anyone until you reach a point where you don't even trust your own self. When you see how the devil operates, the devil doesn't care what he uses as long as he achieves the purpose. He can even use the man of God. He can use anything. Remember I taught you of three influences as a human being. Number one, you must differentiate when God speaks through you. You must know when Satan speaks through you. And you must also know when you are the one speaking. Because these are your three influences. Peter was told, who do people say I am? Thou art Christ. Peter, by Jonah, Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. But my father in heaven. Upon this rock I'll build my church. That was God in Peter. Now Christ was about to be crucified. And Peter said, no man will touch you, Lord. You know you will not be killed. I'll fight for you. Jesus turned and he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Before it was God in Peter. Now it was Satan in Peter. But it took the word, the designer of the thoughts and intents of man to rightfully divide and say, this is God, but this is not God. Christ was not emotional. Somebody say, Amen. Later on, he was taken up on the mountain. He saw Christ glorified. He saw more he saw Elijah. He got excited. He's a master. Let's build three churches. One who call it Catholic. The other one who call it Lutheran. The other one who call it Wesley. And God just said, Behold my beloved son, in whom I'm pleased to dwell. Hear ye him. God did not even comment. He just ignored. Because that was not Satan speaking. Neither was it God speaking. It was Peter speaking out of his emotions. Do you get the point? So he, God just ignored it. Because he said, this is Peter excited. So we are all subject to that. The reason we have cults in the message is because there are men that saw God work through their pastor. And it was God. But the time came where the devil came in that pastor. But people could not differentiate. They embraced the pastor with the wrong seed. And they became a cult. And another time, it was the man of God speaking out of his emotion, speaking out of his condition. He realized money is not adding up at home. He can pay his installments. He can pay his rent. He can service his car. And then he comes to preach about money. And people say it's God. There's no God there. And Satan is not even there. It's just a greedy man trying to settle his debts. Amen. 
And people don't realize that there is nothing about God here. He's just a man who doesn't have a job, who doesn't have a career, who doesn't have a source of income. And they looked around and they thought the better way of making money is to preach the gospel to gullible people. So these are three influences. God can speak through you, brother. Also Satan. And also you can speak. The sooner you accept that, you will not be afraid of yourself. Because when I say you can even be afraid of yourself, without this knowledge, you are dangerous to yourself. You are dangerous to yourself. Young man, you don't realize it's you speaking. Now, you are proposing a girl. It's not even God. It's not even Satan. It's your last guiding you. So, you are dangerous to yourself. You get the point? Yes, Satan can give you a wife. And God can also give you a wife. And you can also give yourself a wife. So you are dangerous to yourself. Tracing the pedigree. Oh brother, we are stepping in a year. There will be a separation from the mixed multitude. And I thank God I never worried about numbers in my ministry. No, I, I never worried about that. And I will never start to worry about that. Actually, my preaching, if it's the right preaching, in the hour that we are living in, it must bring a separation. Somebody must pack their bed. And say, I can't stand this. Then I know I'm preaching right. But if people just keep on coming, keep on coming, I'll have to ask myself, how preachest I? Blessed be the name of the Lord. These are not games we are doing here, brother. This is the message of the hour. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And one thing I won't do is to answer before God as a hypocrite. No, I won't be a hypocrite. Under no circumstance. And if there's one thing, you must never blame me in this life. Is not to tell you the truth. That must never happen. If you go to hell, you must go knowing that man told me. Not that I closed my mouth and I looked at you walking to hell. Then it means I'm not worthy to stand before you. Brother, wrong is wrong. Whether it's in me or it's in you, wherever it is wrong is wrong. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I respect this man. The way I met with Brother Crispin, nobody introduced us to one another. And the time he came to be part of this ministry, it was by God's predestination. Actually, that time he came is after I fought with devil worshippers. So many years of fighting. But I never told him this. I'm telling him for the first time. I, I fought so many battles. And the truth is I was getting weak. I was tired. Very tired. But there's no one I could tell that I can't take it anymore. And God made me meet with this man. Nobody introduced us. But when we met, I just gave him an invitation that you should come over if you remember. And I never thought a man I'm just meeting here and I tell him to come to South Africa can come. And he came all the way from Zimbabwe. <laughs> and he was with us for about two years or so. And that time, brother, it was the time I needed strength. It's the time I needed another man by my side. It's the time I felt my strength was going. But I never say to him or anybody else. What I'm trying to show you is this is not a flesh and blood affair. This is the work of God. Guiding lives, guiding 
individuals. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I looked at his passport. <laughs> Occupation. It's written evangelist. And I'm like, God is good. Do you understand what we are talking about? And I was with him, brother, for a time, but we never fought. We never disagreed. He knew his position in this ministry. I knew my position in his life. This is a man that you just walk to the complex without telling anybody that he's going out. Or he can say, I'm going to buy bread. Later on, he comes, he this shit is having water. You ask what happened? So our pastor ended up preaching in the world there. Without a microphone, without an interpreter, without anyone to say amen to him. But a burden was inside of him. Brother, that's what we are talking about. The Spirit of God is moving man. Not a church. It's the Spirit of God moving man. Not a pastor. But it's the Spirit of God moving man. Fulfilling his purpose. Such a time as this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Origin is important. Now I want you to see something here. Nehemiah chapter 13. Just put it, I didn't give you on the slide. Okay, do I start here, Lord? I don't know where to start. Because, you know, I want to show you the statute of these guys. You see, this Tobiah. Hey, yeah. This man, the Lord is good. The goodness of Jehovah. That was his name and its meaning. He was an Ammonite. And God has said, these people must not come in the congregation. But this man had great power of mischief. Now, now, I'm going to show you his mischief. Maybe before we even come to, 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 let's come to Nehemiah 6. I think I have it on the slide, beloved. Nehemiah 6. Now, it's secret intelligence passing between enemies and the nobles of Judah. Secret intelligence. Mm, it's passing between the enemies and the nobles of Judah. You must understand this. Our kids were acting this. What I'm simply saying is they were elders of Judah. That Nehemiah thought were part of him. But these people were exchanging information with the enemy. Do you know what I'm talking about? To say we are here in this church and I'm your pastor. And you are coming from another place where you had another pastor. And then we make you an elder in this church. And we believe you are loyal. While you are here, you are exchanging letters from somewhere. Marking this pulpit. Sending letters. You get letters. You are in communication. It's, it's a secret alliance, secret intelligence. When you are here to talk to us, it's not you talking, but it's another man from far talking through you. We are not unaware of the devices of the devil. And this is where I preach the balancing, the overlapping of ministries. I preach it in Tembisa. Balancing the overlapping of ministries. When a child is married and the mother doesn't know the full stop, 
And the father doesn't know the full story. Balance in the overlapping of ministries. To say you are the head of this girl. Before she is married. But when she gets married. The brother becomes the head. But you see the father wants to be a head. In the daughter's home. The mother wants to be a head in the daughter's home. They don't understand the overlapping of ministries. It's like people after the death of William Branham, the fivefold ministries here. But some are saying, We want the tape. We want the tape. No, William Branham is no longer heading this generation as a prophet. He's leading this generation in the fivefold ministry. All that was in William Branham is now in the fivefold ministry. You don't go like, no, I wish Brother Branham was alive. Recognize your day and the message of the hour. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's there, William Branham. In the preachers. He's on the pulpit. You don't need a tap to marry you. You don't need a tap to baptize you. You don't need a tap to preach on your funeral. There is the voice of many waters. The same voice that was in God, which was put in William Branham, is in the bride. And the word was in Mary. It is in us. So it's people failing to balance the overlapping of ministries. You get the point? So that's another thing. Is a man who's failing to balance. One day I can ordain a man. Maybe to be a pastor. But if that man is now a pastor, it means he's sovereign. His loyalty to this ministry is according to the spoken word taking sides with Jesus. But outside that, that I must know what it means. You, you, you can't support that man from this congregation and every day you are calling me. Ah, that man is not preaching well. Ah, pastor, we wish you were here. You are in the wrong place. If you wish I was there, come back and leave that man in peace. You are a thorn in the flesh to that ministry. You are hating that man. Move away and come where you feel free and everybody will be happy it's called the overlapping of ministries and that's what I want you to see here these nobles were supporting Nehemiah but yet they are getting letters from Tobiah because Tobiah is the Lord is good infiltration Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay, one person I know doesn't want to hear this is Satan. No one else, it's Satan. Because it's after him. It's searching the green snake in the green grass. That's why I said it's not easy for him to say I pray for these ones and not for that one. To say you're of your father the devil. It's not easy. It takes the word to discern and separate these things. Now listen carefully. That's verse 17. I read it, right? Now watch how it comes. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him, to Tobiah. Okay, first let's read from 17 so that you understand. Moreover, in, the, in those days, mm -hmm. the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and letters of Tobiah came unto them. Mm, manji. And there were many in Judah sworn unto him because he was the son-in-law of Shekinah, the son of Ara, and the son of Johanna, and taken daughter of Meshulam, and the son of Berikah. Gauri kaba yuda, hova o anda, beba divopa, gamu ano, wabaranda, bato biya, gauri to biya, hova emkwansha, wasekanya, murowa arara, na murowa we, hova odze ya wana, wamesulamu murowa, waberika. 
Are you listening to this language? Mukwasha, eh? Eh? Now, when you talk about Shekanina, the son of Ara, is that right? He was the son-in-law of that man. Of a family that came up with Zerubbabel. From captivity in Ezra chapter 2. And the, his son, Johanna, the son, Johanna, Johanan, the son of, of, of Tobiah, took a daughter of Meshulam. You're interpreting, brother. Jo Johanan, the son of Tobiah, he took the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berakia, and he was a prominent person in the building of the wall. I don't know if you're hearing this language. <laughs> Tobiah, Tobiah married Omara, a daughter Wanayana, of pedigree wa, 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 an Israelite. Yeah, and not only did he marry an Israelite, Omara, he made his son <laughs> to marry one person who was chief in the building of the world. <laughs> Do you see how he's penetrating? Because <laughs> remember, he could not explain his genealogy. He could not prove his degree. But what could he do? He wanted relevance. So he began to marry in that land. It's more like a person. Let's say you're coming from another country and then you have no relevance in the other country. But because you're looking for relevance, then you marry a person of a certain nationality so that you can get relevance in that country. Is it when you marry a citizen, you become a citizen? Yes. So Tobiah, Tobiah marries a citizen so that he can be a citizen. And he influenced the son to also marry a citizen of the people that were building the wall. Amen. How many see the subtlety of what we are talking about? He had no pedigree, this man. Now he's getting relevant. No, 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 no. Look, friends. The Lord is good. That's Tobiah. Tobiah. I'm showing you the trail of the serpent. Here. Now, now, when you come to Nehemiah chapter 13, oh God, give us grace. Can I get a real amen? This is the word of life. I know at the beginning you could afford to sleep. But now you can tell. If you are sleeping, you are missing out. Now, we read from chapter 1, verse 1. The law was read, isn't it? And there was a separation from the mixed multitude. A separation, isn't it? To say these are Jews and these ones are not Jews. But watch what happens. When there was that separation, it did not apply to this man. Verse 4. And before this, Elisheb, the priest, having the oversight of the chamber of the house of God, was allied to Tobiah. Shaka, <laughs> oh, allied, allied. Oh, Shaka was allied to an ally. No, Konani. You know, allies. When you say America is allies with Russia, with with with, it's, it's an ally. It's not like you are related. Yes. So Venda is not talking right there. An ally is like Jews and Americans. They're allies. They have common grounds. But they're not related. In blood. No, no. This is the issue. Elashib is a priest. So this man, Tobiah, was to be close to the pastor. 
He wants to be close to the pastor. Check your sides, check your sides. Wake everybody up. Are you with me? Blessed be the name of the Lord. He wants to be friends with the pastor. You know, it's, it's dangerous, you know. You know, let me tell you how they do it. Usually, uh, pastors think they don't really balance many times. Financially. Usually, not all pastors, usually. And now, most of them are also not content with what they have. They are always looking for more. You understand that? Now, that is exploitable. Because Tobiah, Tobiah, he comes to finance the ministry. And he's close to the pastor. He buys the pastor a baki. You get the point? Or he buys the pastor a new car. He renovates the house of the pastor. Maybe he puts a bowl, he puts a solar, he, he does everything. Our brother, that man will become weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. And weaker. There is nothing glorious about that. The more you are supported by the church, the weaker you become. Do you know why you have no power over me? Because you don't support me. If you were supporting me, you would look at me with that eye. My ball. <laughs> And then I'll start to check around. I say, but really? And or you just say, insurance. insurance. And I know the car is not mine, you bought it. Now, now you see what's happening? Tobiah is coming close to the pastor. And he's financing the man of God. Until the fact that he's not bad degree is overlooked. So Tobiah is getting a place in Israel. Not because he's a believer. But because he's close to the pastor. <laughs> I'm not manufacturing these things. They're in the Bible. <laughs> you should read in your own Bible. Because people would think I'm manufacturing things. If they say Tobiah and Elashib were allies. Conan. Conan. Yes. You know, I, say, I, I need some money. Ah, and then, don't worry, Pastor. In the bank, one minute is there. Ah, Pastor, I'm just thinking about you, you know. What are you eating tonight? Don't worry, you see a car at the gate. There is something from Woolworths. And, 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 and Romans. And, uh, and Debonairs. I just thought of buying your supper. Now the pastor will be happy. Thinking all is well. Ah, pastor, your wife does, is she driving? I, I see she comes to church late sometimes. Ah, I've got another car. It's a BMW. I'm not using it. Can I give her? You, you get the point. So the pastor is happy, the wife is happy, the children are happy, but Tobiah is getting closer. He knows what he's doing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brother, we, can, we are not sheep. That you find it in the denomination. You, you, you get the point. If you can come close to me to that extent, it means you must have managed to pass through and hide behind and all these bullets of the word. Because for you to reach here, brother, it means you're a new sniper yourself. Because there are bullets coming here. So, some they die before they arrive. Some they have plans, but they don't reach here. That, that's why I don't believe in numbers after all. Because this word must kill the enemy from a distance. While he's thinking, brother, he's shot from a distance and he never comes close. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
I'm not saying I'm a rich man. I'm saying I'm content with what I have. That's all. You don't need to be rich to be happy. You just need to be content with what you have. And that's all. San Balat and Tobias. Are you seeing this? So now, now, now listen. The priest is coming in. So first he marries. Now he's coming to the pulpit. Verse what? Verse 4. And he says, And he had prepared for him a great chamber, where aforetime they laid the meat offerings and frankincense and the vessels and the tithes of the corn and the new wine and the oil which was commanded to be given to the Levites and singers and the porters and the offerings of the priests. Yeah. So this man is even made a preacher, a leader. You see, the place of holy things is put there because of this friendship. Are you listening to this language? But in all this time was I was not I at Jerusalem. For in the two and thirtieth year of Atezax, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, after the certain days obtained I leave of the king. And I came to Jerusalem and, as, and understood of the evil that Elishab did for Tobiah in the preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. And it grieved me so. Therefore I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. Then I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers, and did that brought I again the vessels of the house of God with the meat offering and fragile eyes. <laughs> I hear in this language. Is Chivenda speaking what I read here? Because I must hear you, Amen. It happened when Nehemiah was not around. When the word was not there. Tobiah crept in unawares. And he had a position in church. Not because he was spiritual, but because he had money. And he was leading the church not by spirituality, but by influence financially. Amen. How many are seeing? The importance of tracing the pedigree amongst us. You start with yourself. You check around you. Okay, now, look, look at this. Look at this. I, I, I'm going to close. You know why I'm going to close? Because it's impossible for me to show you these things today. It's, it's just impossible. I can't do like they acted the whole book in a few minutes. Here. There is a lot I can say. But I'm going to find a place to close. But already I'm introducing the overlap for 2024 if the Lord tarries. Slide number 11. We must see ourselves in the book. Brother Branham says, Oh! All these things, the ones I've been telling you about, all these things, 11, is shadowed, tied up to Christ. And now all the shadows of the Old Testament saints, their ups and downs was a shadow and type and examples for us 
today. Do you see why this is important? We're not just reading the old. It's a type for us. Today. Are, are you with me? No, oh, my. Hallelujah. Pollution of the live stream. Fating. Now, during the time of the reign of Ezra, children of Israel had become backslid. This is Brother Branham speaking. They went out and got more bite women. And they got women from Amorites and Perizzites and many of the other nations. And they not only married them, but was committing fornication among them. And cleanliness. And polluting the very bloodstream. Which is the live stream. Remember in Exodus. It was the blood. When I see the blood. I'll pass over you. But the prophet said. It's no longer the chemistry of the blood. But the life that was in the blood. So for us we need the life. That was in the blood of Christ. To be applied on the lintels of our heart. And when he sees that life, he passes over us. So this problem is polluting not the bloodstream in 2023. It's polluting the life stream. The life of Christ is polluted because people are flirting with the world. Slide 14, flirting with the world. And what a picture that is today of our churches the way they are falling away from the old fashioned hewing line that God laid down for the church the precepts that we were to live by the church is committing fornication with the world it's got out into the world and begin to dally in the world to flirt in the world. You see what's happening? That's what's polluting the life stream of the church. And what's happening when it happens? We become heavier hearted before the Lord. Slide number 15. Now this had embarrassed the prophet so much till when he came before God he blushed in his face. The first when he heard about it and seen the moral decay of his people. It hurt him so bad until he sit down anointed himself. Plugged his hair out. His beard out. He was heavy hearted before the Lord in prayer. Is that also Nehemiah? Ezra was heavy hearted. Nehemiah was heavy hearted. Until the king saw you are not happy. Then when the evening sacrifice was offered, he went up into the temple and fell on his knees and blushed before God for the sins of his people. Am I talking to the bride here? Ezra saw that. It was natural blood mixing. The bride is seeing that. The bride is seeing it. It is the live stream that is mixing. Ezra blushed as the prophet. And the bride must blush when they see the live stream being mixed with the world. With heavy hearts we go before the Lord. And we are praying, brother, for the sins of the people. We are not judging the people. We are praying for the people. Daniel said, we have sinned against you. Not they have sinned against you. You are not condemning your brother. You are not condemning your sister. You are bringing it back. 
to say, Lord, as believers, we have sinned against you. With every heart we come. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. How many see what we are talking about? Look at where it gets spicy now. It is the sin of Whose people are you praying for? Brother, we are not wasting prayers. We are not just praying in vain like fighting and beating the air. We are praying for the sins of the people. But you must know which people. Jesus said, I pray for these ones, not those ones. Now, we're talking about the sin of the elect. That's my last slide. Now, he didn't blush for the scarlet street of the red light district. Prostitutes. He didn't blush for the booze drinkers in the hell hole. Although as bad as it may be, that he didn't pray for prostitutes. He didn't pray for drunkards. But he blushed because of the sin of the elector. And what we need today is some more prophets. And I'll say what we need today is some more believers some more believers with enough God in their heart to blush in the presence of God for the sins of the people who call themselves the people of God and doing the way they are doing people who call themselves the people of God but they are doing what they are doing what a disgrace we have brought to this place the morals of the people oh beloved church this San Balat and Tobiah they are calling us for blushing they are calling for a blushing but not misdirected prayer Lashing after tracing the pedigree, removing San Palat and Tobias, and you pray for the sin of the elect. Somebody say Amen. That's the hour we are living in. May the Lord bless you as the musicians come. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This cannot be finished in a day. But welcome, we are fueling in the air. And then we are going to move forward by God's grace. This is the hour we've been waiting for, friends. And I hope you're going to understand. When you determine to serve God, to buy and San Bala to come. When you are going to say, I will save God, I'll build the walls, I'll fortify the bride to attract opposition. And that's what's coming upon us. God has a work for us to do. There's something he's expecting the bride to do. But Sanballat and Tobiah are going to be grieved with what you want to do. To say, do you mean you want to put wars in a bride that I could get into and out of at any time? You want to strengthen Jerusalem? Who do you think you are? Don't, don't, don't you know I'm targeting that soul? I know it's the habitation of God, but that's what I'm targeting. Don't you know the Bible? That I, the man of sin, one day will sit in the temple of God and be, be worshipped as God and you want to put walls around that soul. San Balat and Tobiah will not be happy. But there is a bride that will be blushing. That's praying. Interceding. But not in the air, brother. 
we know the pedigree. We may walk with Judas, but it doesn't mean we don't know his pedigree. We're just waiting for the right time to tell Judas, go do what you're supposed to do. The people that will squeeze the bride are not people that will come from the Jesuits in the Catholic system. It's actually proselyted believers. Yes, proselyted believers. They will be within the message ranks. Those are the people that will squeeze the bride. We know all about it. And you can't start to look at somebody and say you look like one. Because Tobiah is the Lord is good. So the Lord is good brother, you can never think he's the one. It might be that one close to the pastor. The one praying for you when you are sick. So you can't use your eyes to deal with this matter. It has to be a tracing of pedigree. And it's only the word that can separate. The word is the designer of the thoughts and intents. Dividing the bone and marrow, so and spirit. setting of 2023. How many can say God? 2023 is setting the right way. I think so. We want to say destroy this temple. Now Tobias, the Ammonite, came with his friends trying to stand in the way of Nehemiah. For the walls, they were busy rebuilding, rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. They came insulting them, criticizing them, even cursing them. They didn't know that Nehemiah, he had the full backup of the king. With Determination in his heart to see Jerusalem stand again. Stone after stone, brick upon brick. Not Tobias, the Ammonite king. It says he came with his friends. That's San Balat and the other brothers. Trying to stand in the way of Nehemiah. A type of the bride. Now, they say for the house they were busy rebuilding. They're talking about the walls. Rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. This is exactly where we are standing. In 2023. Now, you may think I'm preaching history. I'm preaching the Old Testament. But I firmly believe these types and shadows they are relevant today I told you what is happening in Israel, Palestine the natural types, the spiritual Hamas invaded Israel and people look at Israel that fence oh between Gaza and Israel, those are not the walls of Jerusalem. 
of the walls of Israel. In the 21st century, what we call the walls, it is the intelligence of a nation. Prakasla, you are in the military, you know what I'm talking about. It is the intelligence that must know what comes before it comes. It reports to the army. They, 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 are, they are like spies. Intelligence system of a country are like spies. They're like spies. So they'll be checking what, what, what Hamas is planning and what they can do before they do it. So the penetration of October was because the walls were down. Yes. That's why people are blaming the intelligence of Israel. Say, How come you did not see that coming? How did they get far and you didn't say nothing about it? Now you begin to realize it's a message to Jerusalem, the bride, to you even today. The walls are the only place that can fortify you. And the enemy can never have access if the walls are there. You get the point. And as we speak, I make it as a declaration in 2023. Whether you want it or not, the walls of the bride are broken and burned with fire. Go in the message churches and see what we are talking about. The gates are burned with fire. There are no walls. The enemy gets in and out at any time. Pastors are fighting. Congregants are jealous of one another. They are fighting one another. The devil is in, brother. And he gets out at any time. People are no longer testifying anymore. The least they can do is to take another believer from another church so that they can fill their own church. They are not going out in the streets anymore. Nobody is testifying anymore. Nobody wants to be an evangelist. Everyone is looking for money. I want to benefit. So I must be a pastor. So no one is in the streets. So people are just proselyting from church to church. There is no new life coming in the message. It's a sign that the gates are broken. There are no walls. And in 2023, the voice is speaking. What is it declaring? Arise for this work. We must build the walls. We must build the walls. We are crying for the sin of the elect. Not the sin of the drunkard. The problem is with the elect. Your burden must be with the elect. Make no mistake. There are people that say they don't need prayer. They don't need prayer because that's themselves speaking they don't need. Whether you think you don't need it or not, God is saying you need it. The bride needs prayer. Pastors, they need prayer. Church members need prayer. Congregations need prayer. They have to be a people that must arise and blush. The blushing bride. Not judging one another. Not castigating one another. But standing shoulder to shoulder. Praying for your brother. Praying for the next church. Praying for the other pastor. Praying for the other congregation. To say, Lord, you are giving me a commission. Strengthen my hands that I can fulfill the task. This is the voice of God for 2023. Believest thou this? With our heads bowed. There is no room for hatred. He has told us we overcome our enemies by love. Bless those who curse you. 
Do good to those who despitefully use you. Pray for those who persecute you. That is what Jesus said. And as this last day of the conference has come to this consummation, I want to convince you, beloved, to join in this good work. Remember the four stages to victory. Prevailing against oneself. Prevailing with the king. Prevailing against the enemies. Prevailing upon your people to convince them to join in this good work. And I'm here to convince you. I'm not going to pray for you because I want you to pray with me for the elect. Now your prayer is not going to be a selfish prayer. That Lord, they are singing. Those people, they don't know God. You are saying, we have sinned because they are one body with us. You are putting yourself as part of the picture. That's how Daniel prayed. That's how Ezra prayed. That's how Nehemiah prayed. Until their prayers were made scriptures because they were inspired and moved by the Holy Spirit. He cried in the New Testament, you know not how to pray. But with groanings that men cannot utter, the Holy Spirit interceded for you. And I believe that's what we are looking for even right now. Even as this atmosphere is right here, we need the Lord to strengthen our hands. You're going to pray for the bride all across the globe or village. You're going to pray for the people you don't know, the people you've never seen. Places you've never been. There is a witness for God in all these regions. It will take that prayer to bring the bride together. It may not be under one church, under one preacher, but under one anointing and spirit in them various locations. Through this prayer, you can be able to be part of this great work that God wants to do as we are overlapping into 24. And you must not forget, Nehemiah was contemporaries with Malachi. These were the last people that closed the Old Testament. They that cried and sighed for the abomination of the land. And as we are crying and sighing, God shall seal us. Because that's where the seal will come. Upon they that cry and sigh for the abomination of the land. Be part of that number. Walk with God in this walk. And one day you shall be no more like Enoch. As this song is going forth, I want you to take your position where you are. We have sinned, every one of us. We have sinned. Perhaps you want your prophet to align you. This will usher you into prayer. The prayer of William Branham. In the spoken word, the blushing prophet. With our heads bowed. I just want you to hear this. And after you hear this, it will teach you how God is expecting you to pray right now. And if you pray like that, shall please him. Brother Branham says, Oh, how we need to pray. Now we'll go back to you again, brother. Do you realize we don't pray half as much as our fathers did? Pastor, do you know we don't put as much time on our knees as the pastors before us did? Women, 
Do you realize you don't instruct your daughter and pray with her at night like your mother did you? Then what about it? Who is guilty? We are guilty. There's no way around it. We are guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty of not doing the job of God like I should do. I'm confessing it that I'm wrong. I'm asking God to be merciful to me. I look out here and see the opportunities I've missed because of petty things. Little old insignificant things that didn't mean nothing. I'm ashamed of myself. As a gospel minister before you, I repent before God and ask God to forgive me and the church to forgive me for being so dilatory about the work of God. By the grace of God and by the help of God, I will not listen to what everyone is trying to tell. Everybody's trying to tell you something to do. They got a program. They got something for you to do. Nonsense. I know God's program is written out here in the Bible and I'm ashamed of myself as a minister of the gospel one million souls won I ought to have won 10 million souls I'm way behind what about you how many souls you won since you've been in Christ Christianity just goes from one to another how many souls you won since you've been a Christian? If you're not winning souls, you are guilty. You are barren. You have brought shame on the church and the gospel. How many people you get out for Wednesday night prayer meeting? If you're not doing it, you ought to be ashamed of yourself before Christ. You are guilty. And your place is at the altar. I invite you to come with me for repentance then will you bow your hands and keep it bowed for a minute while I feel my guilt and would like to repent just bow your head Brother Branham prays our heavenly father I bow upon this altar and ask forgiveness for my sin I ask forgiveness of the sins of those that are around the altar I ask forgiveness for this church for the body of believers nationally and internationally I ask for mercy for us being so dilatory concerning the things of the kingdom I ask that you pardon us for our sins take our transgressions take them away and forgive us for being stupid for the stupidity of the people how we have come short how we have taken bodily exercise how we have done things we ought not to have done how we have sinned before you and on this Sunday night meeting Father seeing the blushing prophet of the Bible we blush tonight I blush before you because of the sins of the people the people, my nation, my people, I'm ashamed of them, Lord. To see our young ladies walking in the streets and acting the way they are. To see prostitutes, young men living in all kinds of life. To see them staying home from the church and reading old magazines they ought not to read. Looking at uncensored programs. Listening to Hollywood dirty jokes. Listening to old boogie-woogie music of the devil that's hedged out from men that's of ill fame and got vile conscience the devil's influence to inspire the works of the devil on oh God I'm ashamed of myself for not rebuking it the way I should oh God take away my guilt I ask you you do it I ask you to forgive these people that's here first us all help us to raise from this altar a new man and woman Help us to go from here as Christians ought to go. 
Help us lay aside every weight and sin that doth easily beset us, that we might run with patience the race that sets before us. Looking not to the television, not looking to the comedians of the world, but looking to the author and finisher of our faith, the Lord Jesus Christ, who despised the shame of the cross and poet for us, suffered without the gate, that he might sanctify the people with his blood. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take us as thine own children tonight. Receive us in this prayer for repentance. Give us, Lord, peace and joy. And may all bears tonight as we lay, thinking of this night's meeting. May we think of the condition of the world that the Bible has revealed to us now. May we think of it, our faces track out for shame. May you bring peace and happiness to every heart. We are repenting, Lord, before thee on this altar. God, help me as I'm breaking forth now by faith and praying that's in your will. And many, many, many hundreds of people may be one for thee. Help me to have faith and courage as I move on. Not looking to anyone but to thee, the author and finisher of our faith. God, grant it. Forgive every deacon in this church. Forgive the pastor. Forgive the lay members. Lord, forgive everyone for all our sins. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive every stranger in our gate. And may we feel the impact of the Holy Ghost on our life. Because we are humble before thee tonight. Repenting with all our heart that you receive us and make us as humble, quiet, sanctified, humble people for your service. Grant this blessing, Lord, at the altar we are upon. Give it and bow our heart, our head and our hearts before thee in the name of thy son, the Lord Jesus. We ask this. Amen and amen. Right in this atmosphere, this was the prayer of William Branham. And I'm going to award you an opportunity to say something to you. Whether you are kneeling, sitting, standing, just feel free. According to what you have heard, respond to him. As this song goes, this is your chance for 2023 to respond to God. Deep calls unto deep. Call on me, I'll be there. open our lips where you are whisper say something to God say something to him don't be ashamed he wants to hear something out of your lips as an individual call on me I'll be there Talk to him. Yes. I'll be praying with you on my knee. Take this time to connect as this song is going forward. If you want to come to the altar, you are welcome. I believe this is an opportunity you don't want to miss. If you want to stand up, Stand where you are. If you want to kneel where you are, just kneel there. But make sure you say something to him. Be praying.
Lord. Your grace we see even now. that you have showed to us. We say, Father Lord, we never knew, we never had an intention to be what we are today. It is because of your predestination, dear God. We thank you for the great inspiration that we have received up to this far. Dear God, you have been our guide for so long. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you because this revelation it has been given to us as babies. Dear God, there are a lot of people who are so knowledgeable, Lord, that they never attained what we have today. We say, dear God, we thank you. We say, bless us and give us more power again to proceed and soldier on to whatever you have given to us. Dear Lord, we thank you for this revelation, O oh God, so that we know our origin. We never originated from our parents. We never originated from our nationality. We never originated from South Africa, dear Lord, but we originated from heaven. Dear God, we thank you for everything that you have done to us. We thank you for the message of this wonderful moment that we are in. This time, oh Lord God, we thank you, for we know that you are planting a great seed, that dear Heavenly Father, it will flourish at the end. We know that, oh God, our predestination on dear Heavenly Father is for us to soldier on under this message. We thank you for everything. Bless the church. Bless the pastor. Bless the saints. Whoever, dear Lord, has received, let this seed that has been planted in their hearts 
be the seed that will flourish, dear Heavenly Father, and bear the fruits. We don't just want to hear the word of God, but we want to act upon the acts of Jesus. We want to act upon the word. For dear Heavenly Father, it is not enough just to hear, but only God, the only thing that we need to see is to see the fruits of what we have attained. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that as we depart from this wonderful place, we are not only going to hear it, dear Heavenly Father. You said, go around and plant this seed so that everybody should hear this message. We say, Father God, it is not for us. It's for the seed outside, dear Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, help us and give us again another energy so that we can go on with this wonderful message that we have. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. We say bless the church and bless the saints and bless the pastor and bless everybody. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, keep us safe. During this time, dear Heavenly Father, we know that devil is outside there. He is running like a lion, but he is not the lion. We have got the greater lion of Judah within us. But dear Heavenly Father, he wants to devour who he might, dear Heavenly Father. But we say protect us along the way. Along the journey as we travel back to our places, safety is the most important thing that we desire from you. We are traveling using cars. They are incomplete. They have been made by the hands of men. But we say, Father, drive us and keep us safe so that we can meet once more. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. We say, Lord God, we thank you for the message of this time. We thank you for the great thing that has been planted in our seed. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray now and forever. Amen and amen. Another hand of praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas, God richly bless you. We've come to the end of our conference. We are going to meet again. Um, with the elders meeting we didn't have it during this season so the elders will request on the group of the elders the day that they will be available that we can come and meet a weekend but until then our next service will be on the crossover where we will have a communion service so we don't have church from now until the new year by God's grace so God bless you and may God increase you may he prosper you may you hold fast what you've had don't let it sleep love one another pray for each other intercede for one another God will be happy how many have been blessed how many enjoyed the conference and we want to say thank you also to the team that was making all this possible the elders of the church the sisters that were cooking people that had sleepless nights words cannot express but we appreciate every one of you people that were practicing this musicians just to make sure they create an atmosphere for us I salute everybody and if you feel like I've not acknowledged you and appreciated you when we go you just have to know we are grateful to each and every one of you let's rise to our feet let's turn around and shake the person next to you and say God bless you brother and God bless you sister as we want to close with this song strengthen my hands for war Strengthen 
my hands for war. All together now. Thank you, Lord. I 
Understanding. 